warriors, workers and worshippers. By Theophilus Ruse. Chapter 2. The First Journey. Numbers 10 verses 33 and 36. This was not Israel's first journey in the wilderness. Of that journey Exodus chapter 15 gives us the story in a few words. They went three days journey in the wilderness and found no water. Elam, Sin, Dovka, Alush, Rephidim, follow in quick succession. All presenting lessons more or less valuable for us if ready to learn them, for is it not written that all these things happened unto them for ensamples, types, and they are written for our admonition. Upon whom the ends of the age are come. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11. Let us now follow their first journey in the company and under the protection of the ark. And Numbers 10 verses 33 to 36 gives us this, with its simple and pathetic appeal of Moses to his brother-in-law, Hobab, for guidance in the unknown way of the wilderness, concluding with, And thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. Not in word, but by action, prompt and direct, does the Lord graciously reprove Moses for this slight. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey to search out a resting place for them. Beautiful and touching act of grace, more effectual than words of rebuke. This first journey, too, witnesses to another thing that we shall have occasion to notice as we proceed, that is, that God does not hesitate to depart from his own ordered way. When the occasion calls for a fresh exhibition of his grace. In the center was the place of the ark, following the camp of Judah, and the sons of Gershon who bear the tabernacle. Immediately behind the three tribes which formed the camp of Reuben, the Kohathites set forward bearing the sanctuary, and the others did set up the tabernacle against Achaim. Numbers chapter 10 verse 21. Following these, again, came the three tribes of the camp of Ephraim, which, in a later day gave occasion, no doubt, to David's beautiful refrain in the 80th Psalm, before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh stir up thy strength, and come and save us. These three tribes being next in order to the ark. How touching and inspiring it is to trace these ways of God in days of old. To see the waters of Marah robbed of their bitterness, followed by Elam with its welcome rest and refreshment, while manna comes in due course, day by day, direct from heaven, and even quails. To still the murmurs of a people so ready to complain and to regret the loss of the fleshpots of Egypt. A deeply instructive lesson is to be learned, too, from the difference between the record now before us of the people's part in this three days journey. And that first provision of God's goodness and grace after the first three days' journey from the Red Sea to Marah. Scarcely had the song of triumph of Exodus chapter 15 died on their lips, and the timbrels and dances ceased, before they began to complain, and long for Egypt's food. But then God met it all in pure unmixed grace. The more they murmured, the more he gave them. That was in the wilderness of Shur. Here at Taborah a different character of dealing meets us. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Numbers chapter 11 verse 1. Why this striking difference? The first occasion was pure grace, but between that scene in the wilderness of Shur, and this in the wilderness of Paran, Sinai had come in, and the people had promised obedience. Too ready to say, all that the Lord has said we will do, they have to suffer under the chastening hand of God the bitter fruits of their rebellious unbelief. Have we not often wondered where the Lord found the answer to his grace that made him write, go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, thus saith the Lord, I remember thee. The kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2. If we had to write of Israel's early history we would more probably have written, when thou wentest away from me in the wilderness. But the same God says by the mouth of another prophet, when Israel was a child then I loved him, and called my son out of Egypt. Hosea chapter 2 verse 1. And deeper still is the mystery of that love, as it finds its further expression in the life on earth of the ever-blessed son of David. In due time going through the history of that people in suffering and rejection, but without failure, and in divine perfection, when, he came unto his own and his own received him not, but said, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and let verses seize on his inheritance. Matthew chapter 21 verse 38. He, the good shepherd, died not only for that nation, and may not we. Some of the other sheep, who have learnt the true meaning of the words, them also I must bring, seek to value more the sufferings and death of that blessed Saviour but to return to our subject. In the brief account that the one verse of Numbers 10 gives us, there is no hint of any distance between the people and the ark going before them. 
to search out a resting place. But this departure from the regular order has its due significance. The had come when they were to begin the direct march towards the land of their inheritance. The silver trumpets sound the prescribed alarm, Numbers chapter 10 verse 5, and all the vast camp is at once astir with preparation for it. Yet there is, no confusion, all is divinely ordered, and apart from the deviation we have already been considering, they complete their first journey in the company of, and led by, the Ark of God. And it came to pass when the Ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Numbers 10 verses 35 and 36. Before we pass on it may be well to note also the double character of the Christian's path and service which is here illustrated. It is our privilege and charge, to guard with fidelity and, may we say, jealously, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to hold fast his name, and not deny the faith. His faith. Revelation chapter 2 verse 13. The thirty-third chapter of Numbers enumerates forty and two journeys of the people from Ramesses to Beth Jesimoth. And Moses sums up in a very striking way the object God had in view in directing these wanderings. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee, these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee, and to prove thee. To know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 and 3. Doubtless, we Christians also are left to pass through the wilderness for a similar reason. To learn our own hearts on the one hand, that is, what we are, and on the other, what God is, in the desert, God will teach thee, what the God that thou hast found, patient, gracious, powerful, holy, all his grace shall here abound. On to Canaan's rest still wending, e'en thy wants and woes shall bring, suited grace from high descending, thou shalt taste of mercy's spring. Though thy way be long and dreary, eagle strength he'll still renew, garments fresh and foot unweary, tell how God has brought thee through.